A 90-year-old mystery. It stirred controversy, fraud, and was pivotal in determining the destiny of Russia and possibly the world has been solved. The detectives, the Armed Forces Institute of Pathology, the crime, the murder of Russia's last czar and his family, and the mystery, two missing children. It's a puzzle that's taunted anthropologists, historians, and the Russian Orthodox Church for decades. Marine Sergeant Brian Buckwalter has the story. January 22nd. St. Petersburg, Russia, in the early 1900s. After nearly 300 years of Romanov rule, war, and a population starved for better jobs and food, threw Russia's last czar into a revolution. But Tsar Nicholas Romanov, the third richest person in history, seemed impervious. Hundreds lost their lives in protests and demonstrations. In the end, the Tsar, along with his wife Alexandra and five children, Olga, Tatiana, Maria, Anastasia, and their only son Alexei, were placed under house arrest, essentially imprisoned in Ekaterinburg. In the early morning hours of July 17, 1918, the family was called to the basement to pose for a family photo. Instead, they were executed. Mad chaos uh, ensued because um, uh, the, apparently uh, for, the, for the girls in their corsets, they had sewn diamonds and jewels into the corsets, and so um, their, their clothing was acting as like a bulletproof vest. So the bullets were bouncing off of them, and so um, the, the executioners had to then resort to bayonets, and uh, so it was a very gruesome scene. Then the Bolsheviks ran into even more problems trying to dispose of the bodies. As they left this site, their truck broke down only a few miles outside of the mine shaft. They very hastily decided, uh, we'll try to destroy the bodies as much as we can and bury them here where the truck broke down. The executioners, using gasoline, fire, and sulfuric acid, did the best they could to destroy two of the bodies, but the others they simply buried nearby. That's why there were two graves. One, containing nine bodies, was discovered in 1979, but kept under wraps until the mid-90s when President Boris Yeltsin allowed geologists to go public. The other grave went undiscovered, feeding rumors that two of the children, Alexei, heir to the throne, and Maria had possibly survived. This is probably one of the most important historical cases ever. With the fall of the Romanovs ushered in communism and the Soviet Union, uh, which completely altered you know, our, the history, um, uh, global history. Then, last summer, the second Romanov grave was unearthed. This is a this is a homicide, and this is you know from from a from that perspective, children died, and so it's important to have closure to this case. So these funny looking tubes are actually the extracts from two of the skeletal remains uh, from the Romanov case. The Armed Forces Institute of Pathology became involved in the identification process at the request of the Russian government because of AFIP's experience in testing ancient remains. Thanks to the Bolsheviks' effort to hide their crime, these remains were pulverized. There's probably so little mitochondrial DNA left in some of these samples, so you have to concentrate the volume down. So this is a sample of the uh, leg bone, a thigh bone that we uh, received from uh, the lab there in Ekaterinburg uh, at this second grave. When we did the mitochondrial DNA sequence from this sample, we found it matches the same sequence that you would expect to find from the Tsarina. But the nuclear DNA, which is unique to each individual, was even more revealing. The two samples shared similar STRs, or short tandem repeats. So what this is telling us is that it's a, over a million times more likely that these two individuals are siblings than they're just two random people. Finally, patterns in the boy's DNA were a match to his father's, Tsar Nicholas. Scientists call the evidence overwhelming. What we know now is that night, um, July 17th, 18th, that the family was completely executed. No one survived. A mystery solved and a family reunited. Marine Sergeant Brian Buckwalter, Pentagon Channel News.